coming up next on the Holistic Wealth Podcast. And leaders don't know, right? We, we don't have, unfortunately, language to oftentimes explain how we feel when it comes to our financial lives and wealth, right? You ask people, what does wealth look like to you? What does money mean to you? What does enough look like for you? And what does success look like for you? And all of these components are what are going to help you become financially resilient and ultimately, you know, live a really high quality life. You're listening to the Holistic Wealth Podcast with host Keisha Blair, author of Holistic Wealth and founder of the Institute on Holistic Wealth. And now here's your host, Keisha Blair. Today we have a very special guest with us. We have Paige Breckel and Paige is a financial advisor. She's deep in the weeds in terms of getting women on track with their finances. She's had an amazing journey. She's also a certified holistic wealth consultant with the Institute on Holistic Wealth. And she's a certified trauma of money consultant. She's finishing up her holistic healing certification at the Institute on Holistic Wealth. And she's on track to becoming a master consultant. So it's been a while. This episode has been a long time in the making for us to have this conversation. I'm so delighted to have Paige on finally. So Paige, welcome to the podcast. It's great having you here. Hi, Keisha. I'm so happy to finally be here. And so Paige, I just wanted to start with your journey and how you came to be so passionate about the field of personal finances, especially finances for women and kind of how you started in the field, just to give the audience a sense of your journey. Oh, man, where to start, right? Um, Well, basically, I'm a bit of a unicorn in my industry, or as a millennial. I've only ever worked at the same company, and I feel very fortunate that way. You know, I'm answering an an ad on Craigslist, actually, to do cold calling for a team of advisors. And then I just ended up moving more into a marketing role. And then after about five years, I started to get my certifications and then I moved into an associate role and I've just been moving up that food chain ever since and feel very lucky in the practice I'm in. I've been here for 13 years. I would say that, you know, my passion for working with women really was always, you know, if I could have had a women's studies major at university, I would have, but my mother really didn't see the value when I graduated, what I would do with it. So, you know, like many of us, we follow our parental expectations. And but I always knew deep down that I really wanted to be working with women because, you know, I don't know, a lot of women that I talk to, they're kind of, you know, there's this whole, oh, men have it better. You know, there's kind of this belief system, if you will, right? I don't think I've ever felt that way. I've, I've always loved to be a girl. I love fashion. I love Barbies and dolls. Um, and I love girlfriends. You know, there's something about your girlfriends that you not think you replace that. And I don't think that men quite have the same relationship. Oftentimes, they're very lucky if they do. Yeah. And so all that being said, I think as I came into the role and learned more about wealth management, because coming in as a cold caller, you know, at 26, I have no idea what finances or wealth management or wealth, you know. And then I saw as a bystander, a lot of trauma, you know, a lot of disruption that came about through mismanagement of money and a lack of understanding around financial products. And I saw a gap in the education system when it comes to, you know, helping people become equipped to deal with life, you know, like financial planning is life planning. And life planning is ultimately oriented towards freedom. And you're absolutely right, Paige. Like, I think women have this sisterhood, this bond. And, you know, it starts from early in our lives, from childhood, and it goes right into womanhood. And it's a special thing that we have and why I'm also very passionate about this topic and holistic wealth and helping women. So I can't remember exactly how you got introduced to the message of holistic wealth. But I wanted to start off because you've been such a big supporter of the message of this movement and everything it stands for. So I just wanted you to to just share a bit about how you came across it. And I know it started with the book and then blossomed from there. But how 
you came across it and why it touched a nerve for you personally. So I came across you um, because you were speaking at my company. And I loved this idea that was different in the marketplace, holistic wealth, right? What's that? Right. And you were a woman and a woman of color and your book was colorful. You know, and I'm like, wow, this is like so not, it's atypical. Right. And I'm curious. And it was an online presentation right before the pandemic, actually. It was February 2020. Yeah. And I've long been looking for a foothold in the industry because, you know, I came in through a very non-traditional way, you know, not a commerce background, not economics background, yeah. not even a business background. I took those courses in the university, but they were not my focal point. Yeah. I'm an arts major. And so when I saw your book and that you're going to speak, I bought the book immediately and I read it and I heard you speak and I was like, wow. That was so meaningful. You know, like we talk about what got me in to working with women, like having that orientation, like beyond the women's studies focus, right? Beyond the sisterhood. It's that women have a different set of financial needs. We've got longevity factors. We've got health factors. We've got caregiving factors. Yeah. We have a big elephant in the room that nobody seems to talk about, but I would love to bring into the light, which is menopause. Yeah. And the fact that women need to be preparing for being a sandwich. Yes. I mean, that sounds hilarious, right? But the sandwich generation where you're looking after kids, you're looking after aging parents. And you know what? It might not be your child, like biologically, it might be a step. And it might be your partner's parents. And so the fact is, um, we need to be thinking at holistically wealthy ways to maintain our levels of energy and to be to be able to be that pillar of strength that our communities, our families rely on from us. You're absolutely right. So over the weekend, I think I mentioned to you, I had this book signing at Indigo in Barhaven here. And it's so amazing. I met a few female financial advisors who came up to me to sign their books page. And that's exactly what they said. They said, we think about women think about finances so different from men. It's values driven. It's more goals driven and we don't think about money quite the same way. We're very passionate about the things we're passionate about, family or role in families. And so we have to plan accordingly. And I thought that was so insightful what you shared because it's so true. As a matter of fact, for this podcast, when we compiled the stats for 2023 on the most popular episodes, it was the episodes on health. Because women are at that stage now where they're having to blend their finances. As you spoke about issues like menopause and sandwich generation, the money for us is quite different because of the changes and how our roles evolve over time. So it's amazing to take this holistic approach. And it's so needed for all women in our communities and globally. And so, Paige, I know, you know, you've taken several different certification programs. You mentioned trauma just before in your previous response. And so I wanted to get from you, firstly, which one of those that you've completed has touched you the most and why? And kind of, you know, give a feel of how you've applied the learnings and the knowledge that you've gained from the certificate. Like, I know you've, you're so active in, in your community in Vancouver. You give workshops for teens and kids. You give workshops for women. You're so active in terms of how you apply this knowledge, which is why I'm so proud of your journey and the fact that you've invested so much into your learning so you can give back and give back in a better way. But like, how have you been doing that? And what have these certification programs done for you in terms of your learning, your career growth? And I'm curious in terms of which one has been like kind of like your favorite so far and, and why? Oh, wow. There's so much to unpack there. Yeah. Well, I think first and foremost, ongoing education is an absolute must in my industry and any industry nowadays because yeah. the pace of change is outpacing almost anything. For me, learning language has been one of the key drivers, whether it's studying for my certifications to become licensed in the first place from a securities and an insurance type of background because I'm dual licensed, to the more soft skills about learning how to articulate 
you know, what is holistic wealth and how does that impact at a root level and on a day-to-day basis? Like, how are you interfacing with the world in the conversations I'm having with clients to be able to have them identify an unmet need or an unspoken desire, perhaps? And they just don't know, right? We, we don't have, unfortunately, language to oftentimes explain how we feel when it comes to our financial lives yes. and wealth, right? You yes. ask people, what does wealth look like to you? What does money mean to you? What does enough look okay. like for you? And then what does success look like? like for you (laughs) and all of these components are what are going to help you become financially resilient and ultimately you know live a really high quality life yeah so going through the courses i've gone through i would say they've all been equally valuable because they've each built on the subject matter that came before it so i took the certified holistic wealth training through the institute first and that really Culminate the, the, the lessons in the book were yeah. a huge part of that framework. And it's all about repetition to become a master, yeah. right? So just being able to go through the book in a different format was incredibly valuable. Yeah. And a lot, there's a lot of education and anecdotal inputs that come through the course that you don't get through the book. You know, it's great to have you on with your video components, with the audio components. And it's, it just kind of, it makes it a more rich experience. Now, the trauma of money yeah. factor, you know, that's kind of the unspoken that many people that I speak with, they didn't have words for that. And then as soon as I say, you know, I help people deal with the trauma of money, immediately people are like, oh, yeah. And whether they're women or men or anyone, they all have a story. That's amazing to hear. And because it's true, they all have a story and we all have a story around some kind of experience that was traumatic, whether or not it had to do with money or money was the impetus. But then because money is so central to our lives, they all have these traumatic experiences, all have a trauma of money component, a money trauma component. So that's amazing to hear. And and you're right. They all build on each other uh, significantly. And the holistic healing is kind of the other piece of it that I know you have been going through. And that also has some techniques for people to heal if they've been through any kind of trauma and kind of weaving this into their day-to-day lives, this meditation kind of mindfulness techniques and other type of techniques that are inbuilt into kind of that certification program. So that's amazing. And, you know, Paige, there's something that you touched on before about that language for describing our finances and talking about who we are in terms of what we think about money. And I know you did the the personal financial identity quiz because I know we've discussed that. It's come up quite a bit in the trauma of money certification program, because I think for most of us, If we don't know our personal financial identity, it's hard to then realize and to to, to kind of know instinctively how to kind of overcome this previous money trauma and to kind of identify some negative messaging that we probably heard throughout our lives growing up. And kind of, you know, like I mentioned in the trauma of money certification program, that drafting or charting that personal disruption timeline which I know you've done. So I don't know if you remember, Paige, when you took the quiz, what your result was, because I know we've discussed that. You've outlined it in several (laughs) of your assignments. But if you could share, because I think you're right. So many people don't have the tools to communicate. And even before, like I think it was two episodes of this podcast before I talked about even money date nights and how the personal financial identity quiz is critical for your having your money date night conversations. So could you tell us a bit about what yours is and kind of communicating your own kind of philosophy around money and your money identity or financial identity? Well, you know, it's really interesting. I actually bring up the personal identity framework quite often in the workshops that I do. Um, I think the majority of people I come across, they really enjoy learning about themselves. You know, like what's yeah. what's a person's favorite word? Their name. 
their name. Okay, yeah, yeah. that makes people sense. People love their names, even if they don't like their name. Like I didn't love Paige growing up. Actually, I felt like wow, what a boring name. But now, you know, I'm kind of like, yeah, I'm Paige. And then when people use my name, I actually really, I listen better. And I think that that is when we offer that footing in the financial identity framework, people are are more open, right? And so it really is, I would say, if not like the entry point for the majority of people, I would say if you're going to go out there and help people with their money mindset and becoming more in touch with their financial selves. Starting with the financial identity framework was a great place to start because people are able to self-identify. And that is one of the most important parts because you need people to have their own aha moment. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So Because yeah. how often when people are telling us anything, right, we kind of tune out. Yeah. I know I do a little bit, and I don't mean to. Like, I want to be engaged. Uh -huh. But I just feel like I don't know who you're speaking to, really. Yeah. Is it me? Maybe. But yeah. I don't really like what you're saying. And yeah. I think when it comes to our money, money habits, money mindset, it, there's a lot of, a lot to unpack there, right? Uh -huh. A lot of the narratives, a lot of calcified and dry bones, as you like to call them. Yeah. You know, I might actually like to flip the script here a little bit and ask how you might, you know, incorporate the dry bones concept, which I absolutely love from your book. Yeah. Uh, into the, the, the healthy development of a, of a personal financial identity. Yeah, that's that's an amazing question, because I was thinking about that dry bones concept on Sunday because I was in church. And I don't remember why that came into my head, but I was thinking what a profound concept to think about renewing or relationship with money, renewing or relationship with what is considered, as you mentioned, calcified, seems dead, seems dissonant, seems so there in our lives but not alive doesn't make us feel alive sometimes it makes us feel absolutely calcified right so I think in that sense that dry bones concept it's very relevant when we talk about our financial identities and very relevant when we talk about overcoming kind of money trauma any negative money experiences because in the book, you know, you mentioned flipping the script. You know, I talk a lot about doing that. And when we talk about negative money emotions and flipping the script and starting a new page almost, wishing those dry bones away, having that dry bones ceremony where we say goodbye, then it's very relevant that when we get this aha moment, like you mentioned, Paige, about who I am. Yes, this is exactly me. This is it. That's kind of the impetus to kind of start that new relationship with money to kind of either say goodbye to those dry bones or wake them up somehow and turn them into something new. But I think that's very relevant. And I'm thankful for that question because I was thinking about it just, you know, a few days ago, as I mentioned. And it's so relevant when we think about having transformation in our lives and how that transformation can look and also kind of giving us like a, a picture and a feeling, evoking that feeling of my bones feel so weary, my bones feel so dry. This is how I feel with my money. How can I renew that? How can I? And that's why this holistic wealth approach is so important. And that's why doing this from a holistic um approach in general to our lives is relevant because it's so, so real to me, even as I'm speaking to you right now. And I know, you know, in the book, I talk a lot about renewal and, you know, really, you know, going past that stage of feeling calcified and dry in our lives. So that's how I think I would. I think I need to add that page. I think I need to add that somewhere. So thank you for that. But absolutely. I love all of your answer there. I, I had so many thoughts that were just like coming up 
as you were you were speaking, everything you said before, and I was like, oh, capitalize on that. Wow, you know? Yeah. Um, this is the thing I really want to highlight here when it comes to the personal financial identity, because and the dry bones connection. It, how often have we felt like we were just hauling ass around, right? <laughs> like we're just yeah. like pulling ourselves through right. like, a, like a thread through the eye of a needle. Yeah. And we're just like weaving our lives together. <laughs> we're darning our like, you know, our financial socks or spiritual socks. And we're like, didn't darning disappear in like the turn of the century like, and like, you know, from the twentieth century, you know, like didn't that go away? Yeah. Well, that's the thing I like to teach in my in your workshops, right? And and um, I was going to say writing, actually. So what I would love to start doing is a total side note. Yeah. Helping people with guided journaling. Because I think when you write you and you use longhand, you have a different thought pattern than when you yes. speak. And you'll write things that you're like, I didn't even realize that was what I really thought. Yeah. And so capitalizing on the dry bones idea, I, I really like people to consider the fact that there is an opportunity for transformation and renewal, but you weren't given the tools to be able to identify that you're not happy or that you maybe have an option that might look different than the path you've been on currently. So here's the thing, right? How do we raise the awareness? Yeah. And that was why I really welcomed your Global Holistic Wealth Day. You know, I really, I know I'm kind of like, Piling a lot of your concepts on top of each other. So I think that's okay. That but it all is part of the same message, really. Absolutely. And it comes down to how do we live the highest quality of life? And that comes down to being able to identify our triggers when it comes to our finances and be able to be comfortable. You know, we want to spend our money because we work hard for our money. Yeah. And we want to not feel guilty about it. We want to take care of our families. We want to take care of ourselves. Because if we can't take care of ourselves, we're not going to be able to take care of anybody else. Yeah. Now, when it comes to healing, you have to be looking at the spirit, the physical body, and of course, the financial, because all of these impact each other. Now, but what if you're not taught how to do that? Right. right? And that is where you have come to the fore to be able to teach people to teach themselves and to bring that into their community because we're only as strong as our weakest link absolutely i loved what you said about global holistic wealth day about journaling and i think it's absolutely critical and so because you brought up that amazing day that was created to highlight and to help everyone around the globe remember this and to how to apply it in their daily lives, because that's exactly what we want people to do to develop those healthy habits and celebrate the day. Now, many people don't know this, page, but you are the Canadian ambassador for Global Holistic Wealth Day, which is amazing. And so you're the ambassador for Canada. And so I just want to get a sense from you about, you know, what does this day mean for you personally? And then afterwards, hopefully we can get into a discussion about Global Holistic Wealth Day 2024 and any plans you might have. But what does it mean to you personally? Well, number one, thank you for bestowing this honor upon me, not to be too grand about it. But honestly, it really is a privilege to be able to be an ambassador for Canada, given my background uh, growing up. I'm the daughter of a diplomat, Canadian diplomat. And it's just so important that we have the right people in the right roles. Yeah, And for me, it's beyond the day. It's a way of life. And that's really, we talk about transformation. And I think I got a little bit off topic a little bit earlier. But what I meant to say, because I think I started to talk about journaling, um, it's got to be an intent, right? And it's every day, even thinking just three minutes ahead, how can I make this next three minutes excellent? This next conversation, this meal I'm preparing, and it all comes down to intentionality. Yeah. And that, to me, encompasses Global Holistic Wealth Day, yes. where it's about creating the awareness and then creating a movement and then hopefully the ripple effects. Absolutely. I love that. You know, holistic wealth is intentional by design. And it's a great way to get people thinking about, you're absolutely right, for the next three minutes, you know, how do I enrich my holistic wealth bank account? How do I be intentional about this meal that I'm cooking? 
How do I infuse more love, more light, more joy into my day? It doesn't mean that everything's perfect in my life. It doesn't mean that everything is going great. I think, you know, for so many people, 2023 was a tough year and some of that has spilled over into 2024. But we can find ways of living mindfully, intentionally, and just infusing more of that in our daily lives and living that holistically wealthy life one minute at a time, three minutes at a time, five minutes at a time, half an hour, one hour, days at a time. We'll get there taking those tiny steps every single day, especially when it's here and we're being mindful about it and being intentional about it. And, you know, paid from someone who has suffered through grief and tragedy, myself, which is how this movement started. I know the impacts of just absolutely minute by minute taking those baby steps to tell yourself it's going to be okay. Everything's going to be fine. I'm going to get through this. Life is going to be everything that I go through is going to build on itself and it's going to prepare me for the next step, no matter how negative or terrible feeling it is right now. And I think there's a similar quote in the book about everything building, our lives building on each other. So Paige, thank you so much for sharing these amazing insights on the podcast today. I'm not sure if you had anything specific built out for Canada or thoughts around Global Holistic Wealthy Canada yet. If you haven't, that's fine. Do you have any sense of what you will be doing on Global Holistic Wealth Day 2024? Yeah, I'd love to be running a workshop, actually, and just raising awareness because I think that's the most important component. Because if you don't know, you can't do. That's true. Absolutely. So that's great. I look forward to hearing more about that. And of course, for the lead up to April 9, which is Global Holistic Wealth Day and the week of April 9th, which is Global Holistic Wealth Week. We'll be hearing a lot more on this podcast and exciting announcements coming up. But Paige, thank you so much for sharing with us. And can you tell the audience where they can find you? I know there's a dedicated Instagram account for Global Holistic Wealth Day Canada, as well as your own personal account. So wherever you want people to find you, just let the audience know where is best to find you on social media and elsewhere. Yeah, I think for the purposes of this specific podcast, that they reach out through the M on Global Holistic Wealth Day Canada. You continue the conversation from there. Absolutely. Sounds great. So everyone, check out the Global Holistic Wealth Day Instagram account, the Global Holistic Wealth Day Canada account. If you want to reach out to Paige, DM her on that account. She's available there. And we also have a YouTube account set up for Global Holistic Wealth Day, as well as Twitter and some, you know, other uh, social media accounts. So do follow along and think about what you will be doing this April 9 and during Global Holistic Wealth Week to celebrate with your families, your friends, your network, and reach out to us if you have any other questions on this show. Again, everyone, please remember to leave us a review on Apple Podcast or Spotify. Reviews mean the world because then more people will hear about the podcast and hear this wonderful message. So Paige, once again... Thank you so much for joining us. It was amazing. This conversation was so great. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Keisha. I look forward to continuing the conversation. The Holistic Wealth Podcast with Keisha Blair is brought to you by. Have you joined the Institute on Holistic Wealth? If you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Choose your membership plan at the Institute on Holistic Wealth slash memberships to join. As a member, you'll get access to free worksheets, advice, coaching, and an intentional design workshop. As you start to live a more holistically wealthy lifestyle, you'll want to stay for a very long time. So go to Institute on Holistic Wealth slash memberships to join. If you haven't read the book yet, pick up a copy of the award-winning best-selling Holistic Wealth 36 Life Lessons to help you recover from disruption, find your life purpose, and achieve financial freedom. 